Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Yeah. We're back again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one was your fault. It was absolute. Well, yeah. It was my fault. I'll take the blame, but... Work, work happens, man. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, um, Unfortunately. The, actually, the real problem was that you led me on that it might happen the next day yeah. or the day after. Yeah. Um, well, so I didn't like make plans to just do it myself. I really wanted to squeeze it in, and it just wasn't happening. Yeah. Just too much going on. So happy so. Halloween, everybody. Yeah. Sorry we missed the Halloween episode. Yeah. But we're getting the November 5th episode. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. You're right. This is the perfect day for us to podcast. This is a good day for us to podcast. Um, yeah, let's... Uh, no, I'm not going <laughs> to... Never mind. <laughs> you know, we're, we're on enough lists, I, I was going to say... You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, want to send it there? <laughs> no, nah, no. Probably leave that one alone. Um, for now. For now. <laughs> At least not at the top of the episode, right? I'm, yeah, I'm afraid not enough people would notice if I disappeared, so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, it'd be like, like, yeah, you disappear over the weekend, I'm not going to notice till like, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, or Wednesday. Oh, or Wednesday. no, I guess it's the end of softball season, yeah, so Tuesday It's Tuesday, Tuesday again, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. My my uh, office would probably be like, ah, well, he, he's probably working from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Until they notice the work's not getting done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That might draw some attention. Yeah. And then they wouldn't be able to get in touch with me. And But I don't know how hard they try. <laughs> you don't think they try too hard? Yeah. I bet they would try. Yeah. Uh, I'll say this, and, and this is actually, it's neither here nor there, but... As far as like as somebody that has employees, like I've been that that employer like hunting somebody down, yeah, because they didn't show up to work and I'm afraid something happened to them, yeah, <laughs> like because and I've had people walk off the job and then I found out like after tracking them down they were just walking off the job, <laughs> but I was so worried about them I was like I had to know like <laughs> yeah, well I uh, I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast I think I did, um, but anyway a, a few months ago um, my my immediate boss uh, died in a car accident. Yeah. So now there's like n- not anybody that's really in charge of me. <laughs> Michael has a lot of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know who it would be at my office that would be like, hmm. That person I'm that really would be concerned <laughs> about, <Mike. laughs> about where he is. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, let's be, not let's not find out. <laughs> it would be my office neighbor, actually. Oh, my yeah. office neighbor would. Would uh, be concerned. Like, yeah, he would. He would send me a text like, "Hey, I see that you're not doing all these invoices. <laughs> Do you need me to help?" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh. That that's what I. Yeah, maybe that's where it would start, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, uh, so we man, we have missed so much to talk about. Yeah. Got a full list. I don't think we'll get to everything tonight, but that's okay. I think we will. I mean, I think we can keep it kind of, you know, like surface level, like maybe not really dive deep on this Try not to find any rabbit holes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But uh, obviously the the big news and probably connected to the elections that just happened um, or the results is uh, all the school board stuff. Yeah. Now, we've certainly talked about this kind of thing in the past and – and I think everybody knows at this point that I ran for Board of Education here yeah. um, locally. And I remember, and this, I'm going to I'm gonna always give the same advice. Yeah. I remember um, having people ask me then what I thought they should do for the best education that, for their children. And I said, pull them out of public school. <laughs> yeah, this coming from the guy who's running for public school board. Yeah. And of course, the inevitable next question was then, well, why are you running for Board of Education? I was like, well, I mean, I'm not, uh, I don't think that I can fix it, but I can at least start trying to push in the right direction. Yeah. Like, you know, but if you want a good education for your kids, private school or home school, that's the way to go. Not public school isn't the answer. Yeah. Um, not right now, not in its current format. I don't think yeah. it ever can be because I just don't believe that the government is capable of doing something that effectively. Yeah. I mean, it's always going to be, I think it can be better than what it is. Oh yeah. But it has been in the past. It has been in the past, but I don't think that it will ever surpass private. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's not capable of that. Like, mm-hmm. it, but it can, it can be better than what it is. And we should fight for that. Like yeah. that's worth fighting for, which is the reason you ran for office. Yeah. Is because that's a fight worth having. Yeah. You know? Well, the, uh, as I see it, the problem has been the reason that, that public education has gotten worse and worse is because it's become more and more centralized. Yeah. Um, the, the power over education curriculum and so forth has moved away from the local districts. Um, and, uh, and that's the problem. Yeah. Because, um, and we talk about this on the show all the time, but it, we do because it's true is different areas need different things. Like there's just like what, what works in New York state won't work in South Alabama. Well, hell what works in mm. New York city won't work in up upstate New York. And that's absolutely true. Like, I mean, they, the, the education in different areas needs to be different like mm-hmm. that. And that's not a bad thing like no. it, for either. Like, I mean, I would disagree with plenty that they would do in New York mm-hmm. versus down here, but it's right for them. Yeah. And who am I to tell them that it's wrong? Don't you want educational diversity? <laughs> educational diversity. Actually, yes, that is exactly what I want. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. that you mention it. So, well, um there's been uh there's been a lot of fire around and um I mean, we may as well just start with McAuliffe's yeah. comment that probably cost him the this is uh Terry Maybe. Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> Terrible with names. Yeah. Um, I believe Terry, though, anyway. Uh, McAuliffe, who is the outgoing governor of Virginia. Yeah. Um, and this is what he had to say about parents' involvement in education. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Yeah, why should parents have any say in their children's education? Yeah, all right. I'm voting for that man. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, who's, who heard that and was like, oh, God, this is the guy. Yeah. Like, nobody heard that that way at all. I don't even understand, like, where he, like, how he rationalizes that. Yeah. Who's no. paying for that education? Yeah. Whose kids are they? Right? Like, I'd be curious, and I don't know the answer. I wonder if he has kids. I don't know. I don't know. It would have been interesting. We could pause and look it up, but I don't want to do that. I don't think it's it's not worth it to me either. (laughs) But I'm just saying, like, what parent hears that and is like, this is my guy. Like, I'm going to completely turn my kids over to the state. Yeah. Like, no. like Be like Sparta. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) Just give your kids to the state when they get to be, you know, past toddlers. Fighting age. I think it was really early, actually. I think they took them when they were like six years old or something. Oh, wow. I don't know. Started their education. (laughs) Right. Um, Well, and that's that's what we do here. It is kind of in many ways what we do here. Yeah. In many ways. Yeah. And and this is part of the danger, obviously, of uh, increased centralization of education. Like, um, in a lot of ways, the education that your children receives influences the person that they become, and and a, a lot of what they believe, and so forth. Yeah. Um, now, you know, a lot of children find their own outlets, you know, the autodidacts that go out there and they re- they find an interest and they read and read and read and and you do that throughout your life. So you can you can definitely be unprogrammed from whatever your original education was. Yeah. But a lot of people don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean because there's just too many other things. I mean, life yeah. kind of, you know, supersedes all of that. Mm-hmm. You, you kind of you get programmed the way you do and then you live your life. <laughs> yeah. Well, but thank goodness for podcasting. Right. <laughs> Podcasting has made it possible for you to educate yourself in almost any situation. So, yep. you know, at least at least at least we have this. At exactly. least you all have us. <laughs> right. <laughs> to help you with this kind of thing. We're much better at telling you what to think than the government. That sounded more condescending than it did in my head. I didn't mean it that way. Um, but uh, a lot of people don't agree. Um, I, I'm not sure who this is making this comment, but I was... <laughs> I was really blown away by this one. And they want to shut down our schools and, you know, move kids over to charter schools and private schools um, without the oversight of the state. And that's wrong. So obviously she and I have some disagreements about how education (laughs) should work. All right. Um, She would have maybe been asking more questions when I gave her my answer about how to improve the education (laughs) of your children. But, uh, the the part that really get like the kicker is the end of that. Yeah. Like that the idea that educating your children outside of the state's oversight is wrong. Yeah, right. Like I do you think she means like morally? 
I, I wonder. Imagine, I yeah. I was. Yeah. I don't even know how to comment on that. Honestly, I, I was just I was a completely taken. Yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. Dumbfounded. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a this is obviously a. Uh, it's um, a, it's a mindset that's out there. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's it, which is scary because I mm-hmm. I don't think a mindset like this would have been out there 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Like, I mean, people would like, yeah, nobody would ever even say these type things in public. Yeah. Well, a lot of things have changed in that time. It's true. And that's fair. And that's, you know, things change for good and bad, but this is scary. Yeah. <laughs> Going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. All right. Um, so I was at a, uh, um, a restaurant last week and a school resource officer came in. Oh. And, uh, he while he was there, um, this other guy like jumped up and like went up to the register and he was like, "Let me get that for you." And he like bought the the school resource officer's meal and I mean the resource officer was like, "Oh no, that's okay, I appreciate it, thank you, but but yeah. that's all right." And he's like, "No, no, no, I insist, I insist, insists, you yeah. know." And so he bought him his meal and it, like I was just sitting there, like <laughs> rolling my eyes and shaking my head. <laughs> um, and it's not that I don't have any respect for law enforcement. I grew up in a law enforcement household. Like I, I have yeah. respect for law enforcement. I think most of those people are are very nice and are in it for the right reasons. I, I think yeah. that, yeah. Anyway, um, but <laughs> but there were so many things going through my head at the time. Like first off, and I, I'm sure that this this can be kind of a. I, I have been told yeah. that this is kind of a cushy job, the school resource officer, and so um, yeah. so people want this like you know police officers want this job it's something that's so um, after, yeah. but i have always thought of it as this is and maybe it's changed since the marjorie stoneman douglas thing where the school resource officer hid in the parking lot <laughs> in the parking of, lot while the kid was in there shooting the other kids yeah um but i i have always thought of the school resource officer as being like the the actual police officer version of a mall cop yeah yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I mean, and frankly, I think that the the mall cop has a harder job. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> in a lot of ways. I. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, so, you know, my first thought was like, this guy is not even like a real police officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other thing, that, like the next thing I thought is like, if you think that this is going to help you at some, some future point where this guy pulls you over for something or whatever, you are sadly mistaken. Yeah. Like this is not going to make a difference. Bribing the tax collector don't help. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the last part, right? Yeah. Like you're already paying for this guy's meal. <laughs> right. Exactly. We're all paying for this guy's meal. Yep. I didn't know we had school resource officers here actually. Yeah. I, yeah. I was kind of surprised to, to we've, see that. We've had them for quite a while now. Mm-hmm. I forget what... In, there was an incident that sparked it here, and I used to could tell you, but it's been a while uh, Wasn't now. there some kid that like uh, wanted to be a terrorist or something like that? Something was, happened. Uh, I can't I, remember I, now. I want to say that. Anyway, I, I don't think it was an actual incident. It was like a potential a potential. Incident. Something... Yeah. So, uh, there was a trigger, and it wasn't... I mean, we're talking like maybe around Trump time, like four... Uh, yeah, I think it was a little before that. Wasn't it, it may have been. Uh, yeah, something happened. If it's what I, I was thinking, of, it might not be. Who it's knows? been in the past four or five years, yeah. something like that. Um, but this is the other thing that that kind of stood out to me. Like I, I made it a, a point of of like remembering what this guy's arsenal was. Yeah, that he had on him to be a school resource officer. Yeah. Now I originally <laughs> assumed because he was wearing purple, it was for the local high school. Um, because their color is purple, yeah. but then, uh, I saw that all school resource officers wear purple, so yeah. it could have been anywhere around here. This guy yeah. could be wearing this to an elementary school is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, because Which the closest really school bad. to where I was is an elementary Isn't that, school. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. and, uh, but he had, he had, of course his pistol. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what type it was. I think it was a nine millimeter. I didn't get a real close look and I didn't ask him to see it. <laughs> um, he had three. Yeah. One, two, three, three additional magazines. Nice. He's good. He, he's he's prepared for the worst. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I guess if you're like out there on an island, you need to make sure you got plenty of ammunition. <laughs> right. I mean, how um, many magazines do you carry? Like, I mean, <laughs> I carry a spare. <laughs> <laughs> a spare. Yeah. yeah. And I have a subcompact, so I don't even have a lot of bullets in the <laughs> magazine. But anyway, um, yeah. So he he had his pistol, three spare magazines, two pairs of handcuffs, a taser, 
Um, two bottles of what I assume, or two canisters of what I assume was pepper spray or mace. Or, or mace, yeah. but probably pepper spray. Yeah. Um, gosh, was that it? I, I should have written it down. I actually yeah. made a little uh, uh, voice memo for myself <laughs> yeah, at the so time. I was remember. like, geez. Um, yeah. And what I was thinking about at the time was like that this is not, I mean, if you're concerned about police relations with their community, yeah. this is not how you send a guy to a school. Like he's not there. He, yeah. It gives our schools a prison feel like yeah. that. Like he's the warden. Yeah. He's there to be intimidating. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sorry. Like, I mean, and I, you know, I could almost condone it a little more at the high school because there's more, like there's like the resource officer at the high school has a full time job. I assure you. Yeah, <laughs> doing what? I, Just like breaking up fights and stuff. Crap like that. Yeah. I mean, so when I was at that high school, yeah. actually, this oh, high I, school I graduated that, yeah. that high school too, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> when I was at that high school, um, fights were broken up by the vice principal, yeah. who was like a five foot four woman. Yeah, well. with her bare hands. <laughs> That's like, not the same principle I had. Yeah. You don't, you don't need. Yeah. I mean, well, well yeah, authority will break you know, up a fight. There was yeah. also a principal there that was like a six foot two guy who had been a football player. Yeah. You know, when he was younger. But I think all of the principals we had had been football coaches at one point. And they were these big, huge, massive men. Yeah. So like, they didn't have much trouble breaking up a fight. But yeah. there were fights almost daily. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's just. I mean, that's, that's it's well, and I'll tell now you now they press charges for that. I was gonna say I'll tell you this. Um, I know at my daughter's high school, there's not fights daily. Like it's rare. Like I mean, it happens, but the repercussions are so so major that there's just not that many fights. That's because it's an all girls school, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if only. <laughs> if only. <laughs> uh. so. No, um, but yeah, I mean, they press charges now. So if, mm-hmm. like two kids get in a, in a physical fist fight, like they're, they're really screwing their, their life up yeah. <laughs> for the next at least period of time till they turn 18. Yeah. Well, I, I remember I got in a fight after I got off the bus one day when I was in middle school. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the mother of the, the other kid, yeah. um, took it to the school Oh, wow. And uh, at that time, they were like, well, it, it happened between them getting off the bus and going home. So until they get home, they're still technically our problem. Yeah. But this really isn't our problem. You guys need to work it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not true at all anymore. No. Yeah. If that, that today, like, you can that get expelled be... for, um, for fights that happen like, not even cl- like you've been home, gone Kmart. back out. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't so. know. I don't understand why, why anybody thinks that that you know. School this needs- is what it is. Is I don't understand why any parent feels that the school should be raising their kid. Yeah, no, that's not their job. I mean, it's not like even even if you've got like a good private school that that you trust, that's still not the school's job. Like that's not their place. You know. Yeah. I mean, education is 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 good and important, and they need all of that. But that's mm-hmm. not. There's a line there, and the, we're vastly crossing that. <laughs> yeah. Or we have people that want to vastly cross that. But I, I don't think they're going to win because you've seen some of the stuff I have about what's going on at the school board meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, people are standing up to this. Um, and the school, the school board meetings is the place to take the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, like, go into the principal, because I've, I've actually told a couple of um, – friends of mine in the past couple of weeks a difference talking about different stuff that's going on in their schools mm-hmm. um that you need to go to the school because they've went to the principal and they keep going to the principal like you're going to the wrong person yeah you need to go to a school board meeting that's where you would like believe me you start getting up at the school board meeting and making some noise something's gonna change yeah <laughs> especially if you got a few people with you it don't even take a lot you've been to those meetings mm-hmm. you got a yeah. hand, you got a handful of people and they're ready to make some noise mm-hmm. you're fixing to get some attention <laughs> yeah that's that's absolutely true of course you know maybe now they call the FBI well, yeah, that's well, that's kind of the direction we're heading. It's getting kind of mm-hmm. scary. Um, I mean, there are a lot of people out there that believe that it is that or that want to raise your kids. Yeah. Um, and they're obviously concerned. I mean, here's an example of one, and she's very concerned about the children of these parents that are at these school board meetings wanting to have more control over their children's education. Yeah. Um, but that's not exactly how she talks about it. Yeah. So here you go. All right. You look at the rage, the anger, you think, 
What is this doing to the children in those homes and their mental health? <laughs> Do you have any commentary on that? I tell you, man, um, that's just scary to me. The, the whole idea that the person that's going to the school board meeting that cares about their kid's education mm -hmm. is the one that this lady is fearful about the kids in that home. Yeah. Like clearly these parents at least care. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can't tell me that the, you can't tell me that the, the parents that are going to these school board meetings, raising cane about how their kids are being taught are the ones I need to be worried about what's going on in their home. Trust me. Those aren't the ones we need to be concerned about. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like that's, yeah, it, it's it's amazing how all this has been turned on its head. And, of course, now McAuliffe lost um, the governor's race. Yeah. And in large part, probably, because of his comment about that parents shouldn't have any control over their kids' education. Yeah. Um, and I, That had to have been what flipped that election. Like, I mean, it could have been other things, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying there's even Democrats that hear that that have kids in, in that state have got to hear that and be like, oh, God, like, I can't vote for this guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, what, what's yeah. wrong with this guy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, and um, I, I think that uh, hopefully this is a turning point. I mean, uh, hopefully people are seeing um, the danger of the kind of government control that they are allowing. Yeah. Um, particularly over their children. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if we're going to get a libertarian moment, it could be over exactly this. Mm -hmm. With education and, and like, you know, what's going on in the schools. Like, I'm not saying that this is going to be that, but who knows, man? Like, if this stuff is still as, as, if things are still going the way they are now, three years from now, mm -hmm. maybe this is how we get a Dave Smith in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I mean, like, it, it could be, man, because people, like, you want to talk about something that people's passionate about? Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing that people are more passionate about than their kids. Yeah. I mean, there's not like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, that's what it is. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I think mostly anyway, uh, that's true. Well, um, we've beaten that one to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot to talk about there. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, it's I actually had something else to say, but for, I completely lost it right at the end there. And I, for I so many know, people, like, th that is the most important issue though, mm -hmm. you know, especially people with kids in school. Like, I mean, that's, that's their number one issue. Yeah. So it, it's worth, worth taken apart and for those of you that don't have kids in school just think about how your money is being used to do this <laughs> right you're absolutely right <laughs> absolutely um so yeah post or and man there's so many complaints about charter schools and private schools and a lot of states make it very difficult to do homeschooling oh yeah um or to start a private school yeah um and you know, there's because a reason they for that they, want, they want the control for, of the they information. want to force you into sending your kids mm -hmm. to a public school um, you know what else the government's really good about forcing you to do? What's that? Is use U.S. dollars. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about fiat currency for a minute? Sure. <laughs> um, so there, there's actually some real talk about inflation going on now, which usually that's a thing that's kind of brushed under brushed the rug. Under the rug. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's so in your face, there's no way to brush mm -hmm. it under the rug. Well, they're trying their best. I mean, I've heard people say, well, the it's not inflation. It's that um, prices are going up because the demand is so high <laughs> uh, right now. And, well, you know, there's been a lot of talk about supply chains. Um, and <laughs> there's a cat that really wants in this room. <laughs> I mean, our, to to zoom out even from just just the currency part of it mm -hmm. or the inflation aspect of it, like our, our economy is crazy right now. I mean, we shut the country down for almost a year. Yeah. And like we're, it's trying to get back going, but the job market, the like everywhere you look, mm -hmm. there are serious problems. Well, and that's the big thing about the supply chain is that – um, it, there were so many consequences of shutting down the economy over this yeah. virus. Um, and you know, one of those things is that like, besides the fact that there were a whole bunch of jobs that were declared non-essential, yeah. uh, which included some supply chain jobs. I'm sure it did. Um, uh, there were also a lot of people laid off because the demand for supply chain work 
went down. Because anytime there's a real question, there's uncertainty in the economy. Like businesses aren't continuing to order all their stuff. Oh yeah. And you know, besides the fact that there were businesses that were shut down, so they weren't ordering because they weren't actually in business. Yeah. Even the businesses that were open are going to reduce their orders because they don't want to be stuck with the with the bag in the end, right? Yeah. Like they don't want to. Well, and you had areas of the country where they were roping off sections of the store because you could only buy essentials. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I know it's ridiculous and it wasn't happening everywhere, but like things like that have an impact, mm-hmm. you know. So, I mean, think of your your typical supply chain guy, and this is not just truckers. There's lots of oh, other yeah. uh, there's lots of other jobs in between here. But um, all right, so say you're put out of work because there's just not enough demand for what you do because a bunch of businesses that used to use your services are shut down and a bunch of businesses that uh, continue to use your services are using your services a lot less because they're just not sure what the future holds. Yeah. All right, so you're put out of work because of that. Do you just sit there and wait? No, you go find you, you. I mean, you don't have a choice. Like because yeah. I mean, even with the government paying you, I yeah. mean, chances are you were probably making more money than what even what the government was paying you, depending on where you are in the supply chain. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, you go out and you find another job. Yeah. Well, so then a year and a half later or whatever, <laughs> when your original uh, industry is back up, like trying to push back to full force. Yeah. Do you quit the job that you went to? To go back to that one, you might, but even Probably if you not. can, <laughs> even if you can make more money back at your original job, now you got to ask your questions though, like how dependent can I be on this job? Oh, because yeah. I was dependent on it before, and it turned out to be a bad gamble. And and people are heading into all kinds of other industries. Maybe you like what you're doing now more. Yeah. Like I mean, maybe it gives you more time with your kids. Yeah. So exactly. you can uh, go up to board ed- education <laughs> meetings and complain. <laughs> right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. But there's a, I mean, there's a lot of things that people didn't consider about this. Yeah. Uh, oh, and yeah. certainly politicians didn't consider oh, no. about this they because considered. most of them never had a real job. Yeah. Um, and they're, you know, they're trying to make up for it. Here, <laughs> this is one of the uh, interesting things. Well, just like, let's throw in a little bit of, a uh, little bit of inflation news first. All right. There's yet more evidence of inflation heating up. A key barometer of prices is up nearly 4.5% from a year ago. That's the most in 30 years. And wages and salaries jumped a record 1.5% in the third quarter as employers competed for workers. Now, I've heard this spin a bunch, actually. Yeah. the uh, Well, you know, but wages are up 1.5%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a third of what prices are up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't actually help me that much. And something to consider with the prices is not only are the prices going up, the sizes are getting smaller. Mm-hmm. Like the portions are not as big as they were, and the price is higher. Yeah. So and and take this that from somebody that's in the industry. Like I work retail. Like I've watched this stuff get smaller, and I put mm-hmm. the price changes up when they go up. Like this yeah. is this is happening. Well, and the, you know, they're trying their best to, to make up, make up for it, I suppose. Um, and, and keep the economy going. It, it kind of amazes me about how much focus there is from governments or from politicians on the economy and how little they understand of how it works. And, you know, even, even the people on the left that don't even make it a, point to talk about free markets even though the people on the right aren't talking about free markets the way we talk about free markets but Mm -hmm. um but the people on the left that don't even bother uh they're you know they're still trying to they still focus on the individual's economy right like they're still concerned about you know whether this person has enough money coming in and they think that the answer is for the government to give them more money yeah um and you know, they're actually creating the problem that they're trying to solve. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, in, in when was the Federal Reserve Board formed? 1910, something like that? It was before the First World War. Yeah. Um, I mean, I want to say 1913 just because a lot of stuff happened that year. Yeah. But that may not be correct. <laughs> yeah. It, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Early 1900s, anyway. Yeah. Uh, it was when the Federal Reserve was formed. And it its job is to control the monetary policy, really, of the United States. Yeah. Um, and it's in this weird position where it's technically private, but it's not really private. I mean, it is a government entity, but it's it's technically private. Um, and in in most ways, they control the money supply in the U.S. And 
we keep talking about like the reason that inflation happens isn't that things cost more. This is one of my favorite um, bumper stickers from Liberty Stickers, by the way. Yeah. Is uh, it says something like. Um, Things don't cost more. Money's just worth less because the government keeps counterfeiting. Yeah. <laughs> and that really sums, kind of sums it up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it in terms of gold, but, it, it, you know, any commodity works. Anything that you're buying works. Um, it's not that gold is worth more. Yeah. It's that it the the dollars are worth less, so it takes more of them to buy the same amount of gold. Exactly. And the same thing is true of T-shirts or water or whatever. Yeah, um, and anything you're purchasing. Yeah. And and just to try and illustrate that, and so the the money su- supply should have some kind of connection to something real in the economy. Yeah. Um, it used to be gold. That ended completely in 1971. Yeah. Uh, actually, it ended before that, but it officially ended in 1971. <laughs> Um, so now the, the U S dollar isn't connected to anything. Um, but it doesn't have to be a precious metal like that, a commodity. It could at least be connected to, uh, you know, some measure of production, um, in the U S or something that, that it could be tied to, um, to make sure that you don't, because what they're doing now is they're creating so many U S dollars to represent the same amount of productivity or the same amount of stuff. Yeah. Um, so the dollar naturally becomes less valuable. Yeah. Yeah. And this has happened, uh, you know, in a bunch of places over time. And there are actually people talking about hyperinflation. That's not happening here anytime soon. I don't think, but then you start looking at these numbers and you start to wonder, but I don't want to create a panic because I don't think that hyperinflation is coming. Yeah. But, um, it, just looking at the federal reserve assets, which is mostly treasury securities. It's, it's kind of a, a you know, a rough, uh, parallel of how much money is in the economy. Yeah. Um, in uh, in August of 2007, um, before the financial... The, before the crash. The, yeah, the 08 the, crash. Yeah, the 08 crash. Um, the Federal Reserve had about $870 billion in assets on its balance sheet. Okay. $870 billion. Now, um, one of the things that they did to try and alleviate the crash uh, mm-hmm. was to create a bunch of money and invest it here, there, and everywhere, propping up the stock market, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, giving it out to banks to yeah. keep them from failing. For, you yeah, know, yeah. We, we remember that. <laughs> um, so at the end of 2009, uh, just over two years later, um, the Federal Reserve's assets were $2.23 trillion. Whoo! Yeah. So they had almost tripled in, in just over two years. Yeah. So, but then we had a relatively good, steady period. Yeah. Um, but we were still fighting wars everywhere, and there you need money for that, oh, and yeah, you know, so fund that. Um, fund the war effort. And there's still plenty of uh, of wealthy people who benefit from printing new money yeah. um, because they get to use it before the rest of us do, before the inflation hits. Yeah. Because uh, the inflation follows it behind. Takes time. Yeah. yeah. It um, the, the money has to 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 start to trickle down through the economy before. Um, people realize there's too much of it and it becomes worthless. <laughs> yeah. So the people that get it first get full value out of it. And then the, yeah. us plebes down at the bottom, you know, yeah. um, our money just kind of floats away yeah. and all our savings and everything else. But anyway, um, so from the 10 years, from the end of 2009 to the end of 2019, um, it, the uh, assets went from $2.23 trillion to $4.17 trillion. So okay. less than doubled, close yeah. to doubled, but less than doubled. Still, longer period of time then. Yeah. yeah. So it has been less than two years since the end of 2019. Yeah. And the Federal Reserve's assets on the balance sheet today, or, well, the beginning of this month, um, which was only a few days ago, yeah. $8.57 trillion. So it has more than doubled in less than two years. Yeah. They have created half of the money that's in the economy right now in the last two years. Yeah. Out of nothing. And you expect that to not have any effect? I mean, that's because they act surprised like there's, oh, wow, there's inflation all of a sudden. Well, yeah, you just printed all of this money. Yeah. Money printer go burr. (laughs) Yeah. um, And then, of course, they had the uh, the G20 meeting just recently. And, you know, this is a problem for governments, too. And they recognize it to some degree, not as much as they should. Um, But they recognize it as something of a problem. And they... Uh, what they think is that, well, we had to get more money in to balance all the money that we're putting out. Um, so, uh, they agreed, um, to, 
you know, I was going to play a clip here, but there's just no point because there's only this one piece of information really in it that's worth anything. And that's that they agreed on a, a unanimously, of course, the leaders yeah. of these governments agreed unanimously to set a, a 15% minimum corporate tax rate uh, internationally. Oh, really? Um, and that's, you know, to try and prevent uh, companies from using um, states with low tax rates as uh, as shelters. Yeah. 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 Um, safe haven. Yeah, that's the word that they use. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know how the G20 enforces this on the rest of the world <laughs> exactly, but anyway, um, and then the other, I, I guess there were two pieces of information that were important there, and the other one was that um, Biden said that they expected it to generate, uh, I think it was $60 billion in additional revenue <laughs> for the U.S. government. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there right. you go. Not for us. And, yeah. it, you know, we certainly don't believe in a fixed pie here yeah. like um as you know production increases uh becomes more efficient etc the economy grows yeah. there there isn't a limit to the economy but one thing that i can feel fairly certain of is that every dollar that the government spends is a dollar that private people don't get to spend exactly no absolutely right it's just you know and it may say you may say well they're giving them dollar to me to spend yeah, but they took it from somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it may be the corporation. And then you got Jen Psaki that stands up there and with a straight face says this. Uh, obviously, the president's commitment remains not raising taxes for anyone uh, making less than $400,000 a year. There are some, and I'm not sure if this is the case in this report, who argue that in the past, companies have passed on these costs to consumers. I'm not sure if that's the argument being made in this report. We feel that that's unfair and absurd, and the American people would not stand for that. <laughs> yeah, like what world do they live in? Good night. Like, yeah, there's, there's no way she can sit there and believe that if the taxes go up on corporations, that they're not going to pass that to the consumer. They always have. Like, yeah. this isn't something new. Like, mm -hmm. she acts like it's some kind of myth. That, yeah. You know, oh no, they uh, we wouldn't approve of that, and and the, and the people wouldn't stand for that. Bull crap! They've stood for it every time. Like that's mm -hmm. that's just how it works. <laughs> yeah. If you increase the cost of doing business, they have to make up for it somewhere. Yeah. Um. Right. So maybe maybe they don't pass the cost along to the consumers. Maybe they just cut the wages of their employees. That was what I was fixing to say. Maybe and they do both. By the way, yeah. like most corporations use a balanced approach where they they'll mm -hmm. increase the prices, but they will also cut cut the labor cost mm -hmm. and, and whatever that means, it, whether it means cutting people's salaries or just having people work less, usually mm -hmm. it's having people work people less go. Yeah. yeah. Or let people go. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, that's always how it's done. And there's nothing they can do to stop that. Like she acts like there's some way that they're going to like intervene in that mm -hmm. process somewhere. And I mean, maybe they think they can, I mean, they, they've done everything else just about. So, yeah. um, I mean, that's just... Uh, they, you know, they already do that to some degree by uh, minimum wage mandates and so forth. Absolutely. They've already gotten involved in, like, how the corporation spends its money. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and it hasn't yeah. helped any of us, by the way. No, no, yeah. Yeah, because it's always... It, and even there, she's preaching it as, as trying to help the people, but that's... <laughs> you're, you're doing the opposite. <laughs> yeah. You're just giving fewer people jobs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And raising the prices for people. <laughs> um, so another thing that has been talked about, I think this was cut, but I'm not 100%, um, is uh, tax on unrealized capital gains. Oh, yes. You heard about this one, too. Yeah? <laughs> um, which is, okay, so capital gains are when you have an investment, um, you sell the investment, you pay tax on the profit that you made from your sale. Yep. So what they're talking about is taxing the profit that you made without selling it. Yeah, the but profit, you haven't made a the profit, profit if you haven't you would sold. make if you sold it yeah. at that time. Right. Which who whoever determines when that time is, like mm -hmm. there's so much to this that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, but the main thing is that it removes uh, a big incentive for investment mm -hmm. in the economy. Exactly. Um, and you need capital investment to grow an economy. Oh, absolutely. It, and it is necessary. Some, when when I was talking about this with some people, the big thing I said is like this would, if this was actually put into some kind of practice, mm -hmm. um, 
it would crash the stock market immediately. Yeah. I mean, it would send it would send us into a great depression. I, I believe it would send us into another great depression because there's, mm. I mean, you, you do make a point because I we I think me and you talked about this as well mm-hmm. that um there is nowhere else to put your money. Like yeah. you don't have a lot of options. Yeah, interest um, rates are too low for you to you know you money to go market anywhere or else. you know CDs um, or any kind so of investment you, like that. You do make a good point there. Safe investment, right? Yeah, but um, I do think enough mo- people would pull their money out that it would. I mean, there's there would definitely be impacts. <laughs> mm-hmm. There would definitely be impacts. I mean, one of the questions that I have um, about the because there's there's so many things that are weird, but one of the questions I have is wh- if if you were taxed on the difference in the value when you bought it and the difference in the value now. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all inclusive? Or I mean, or is that just for the past year? Yeah. And and what if um in order to pay those taxes, I sell a portion of the investment? Yeah. Do I still then pay I have, taxes? Then on the I original? have capital actual capital gains. Do yeah. I pay taxes again on the capital gains to pay the unrealized <laughs> capital gains? I'm willing to bet you would or you would be asked to uh, I, I don't know. I've I heard somebody make an argument, and I'll probably butcher it, but I, I do think that somebody, people were making the argument that this is actually an attack on crypto, a way to, um, to because mm. so many, particularly young people, but so many people are investing in these crypto markets, and it caught, and there's such ups and downs in them, yeah. and they, they're against this anyway. I mean, this is, the government isn't for crypto, mm-hmm. so this is a good way to attack the crypto markets. That might be true. I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. Um, yeah, if they don't consider it a currency, then... Yeah. It has to be an investment. Yeah. So... And there's mm. there's a lot of the next few years are going to be pretty interesting with the crypto markets. How the because the government's going to get involved in this one way or the other, taxing and and move, doing stuff to it. Yeah. Um. So that's I mean this this whole thing could have been an attack on that. Yeah, it might be. Um. Let's see. I'm just making a quick note so I don't forget things. All right. Um. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're running out of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of did too. Uh, I mean, we're we're running into 41 minutes here anyway. So, um, yeah. Did we have anything else other than the economy we wanted to talk about? No, not particularly. Uh, I mean, we can talk about some COVID stuff. Um, there's always COVID stuff in the news. We can talk about Alec Baldwin. We can, oh, we haven't talked about that. That's right. That's yeah, actually kind of... We, we missed an episode. On, that was the episode we were supposed to do that we yeah, missed. that's right. I forgot. So. Um, I forgot about Alec Baldwin. <laughs> As you should. He Okay, so just interesting uh, podcast-related note about Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure... Uh, actually, I know. Um, you remember uh, that I, I say, like, one of the big influences on... Um, on where I have fallen politically is the, uh, the TV miniseries about the Alamo. Oh um, yeah. 13 days to glory. Yeah. And I, I have frequently quoted the speech that Colonel Travis may makes on the 11th day about crossing the line. And, yeah. um, you know, I'll, we've I'll discussed just do, that on this podcast. Yeah, before, I'll do it now for those it, of you that again, haven't yeah. heard it before. Um, you know, the myth of the Alamo is that, uh, on the 11th day and it's cause the, when the fort was nearly encircled, um, by the Mexican army. And they had like 180 people defending a fort against like 3000 Mexican soldiers. Right. Yeah. Um, and the, the fort was nearly encircled and, uh, it was clear that, that if they fought, they were all going to die. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the, the myth is that on the 11th day that the, um, the officer in charge, which was, uh, I think Lieutenant Colonel, uh, William Travis, right. uh, William Barrett Travis, um, gave a speech and drew a literal line in the sand, uh, giving people the option if they wanted to stay and fight to cross the line. Um, and if they wanted to go, uh, that to not cross the line, they could leave under the cover of darkness and try and slip out between the Mexican lines before they were completely encircled. Yeah. All right. And so as the story goes, only one person left a Frenchman, of course. Yeah. And, uh, so this is where the story comes from. Yeah. Um, and so there's been a bunch of versions of this, but I really liked the version of the speech in this, in this mini series. And of course, nobody knows what, you know, because nobody, we yeah. we, nobody even knows if this actually happened. Like yeah. there's no <laughs> telling if this actually happened, but, um, in the, um, in the, the mini series, Colonel Travis stands up and he says, this is not about land or money. 
This is about the one thing that no man should ever be able to take from another man. The freedom to make his own choices about his life. Where he'll live. How he'll live. How he'll raise his family. We face a man who would take those God-given rights away from us. Well, not from me, he's not. And then he draws the line and says, those who wish to stay and fight, no. cross this line. No. Um, and all but one do. Yeah. And... uh the actor who played Colonel Travis in that movie yeah. was Alec Baldwin. Oh, wow. Didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a young Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. So uh, I guess one of the points of this is that I feel fairly confident that he has gotten some firearms training in his career. <laughs> yeah. Because there were a lot of guns in that movie. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, the, it doesn't show, though. <laughs> no, it doesn't, because... I mean, when when we talked about this initially, the weeks ago now, mm-hmm. like my first thing was, he killed that that, those, that lady, like, yeah, straight up. Oh, like, I agree. Um, and and he should have to pay the consequences of that. Yeah. I mean, I and I get it's an accident, and accidents happen, and they're tragic, mm-hmm. but you still have to pay the piper. Yeah, I think he should be prosecuted. Yeah. Um, I, I think that everybody who handles a weapon, even on a movie set, is responsible for that weapon. Yeah, especially if you're going to point it at somebody and pull the trigger knowingly. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they didn't hand him that gun thinking he was going to fire it in yeah. the air. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of stupid stuff that happened around this, yeah. but I don't think that it uh, absolves him. No. Um, and I, I, this is one of those situations where, like, a guy who hates guns uh, doesn't know enough about guns to know whether it's for real or not. And, yeah. you know, one of the things that, like, um, one of the things that I really don't get about it is that it went through at least, he was at least the third set of hands that handled that gun yeah. before he fired it. Yeah. Um, none of those people checked it enough to know whether there were live rounds in it or not. So my understanding is, is a couple of things, is there were live rounds on the set. Mm-hmm. Because apparently some of the people there were recreationally shooting some of the guns, yeah, um, out there. Which one for is for stupid one, in and of is itself. the stupidest thing you could yeah. be doing. Um, but the other is is so this is one of those guns. It was a revolver, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the kind where the cylinder comes out. It was the kind where the cylinder stays you, in, and you have you to slide the it. thing slide off the to the thing. side. Yeah, yeah. Which um, which I hate. The, those annoy me. I, I want to be able to look in there and see. Yeah. Um, but it it adds a wrinkle to when you're pulling the ammo out of it. Mm-hmm. But there's still no reason that a, a, somebody that's supposed to be an armist or whatever they call this armor, pos- armor um, this position, um, should be qualified to do that. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure this gun before it goes out on set yeah. doesn't have any live rounds in it. And the assistant director, or whoever it was that was the in-between person, should yeah. also have checked it. Yeah. And Alec Baldwin should have checked it And Baldwin should have checked, checked it too. It too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And no, I think there this is this is what I, I mean I know I don't think that in the end he'll be prosecuted. I don't think which, so. Either. Uh which irritates me because I, I can tell you something that I am a hundred percent certain of. Yeah. Is that if you handed me a gun yeah. and said, This has blanks in it, and I shot somebody with it and it turned out to be live rounds, no, I would be prosecuted. No question about it. No question. Like absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I can't be well. like He's responsible. He's the one that told me that there were blanks in that gun. Yeah. No, it's not how it works. No. Um, and something else to kind of bring this full circle, and because this was brought up on the podcast, I don't remember by who, but um, that, you know, gun education used to be taught in school. Gun safety mm-hmm. used to be taught in school. Yeah. And that, that's something you, so you hear that a lot. Like people say that all the time. Yeah, well, back in my day, you know, they taught that in school. And and I've always kind of blown it off as, you know, yeah, but times have changed, you know, the mm-hmm. play, the world's a different place now. But is it, though? Like, the Second Amendment still exists. Like, it's not like we've got, it's not like guns have left this country. Mm-hmm. It's not like the Second, we, people have a right to bear arms. And if people have a right to do something, they should probably be educated on it in school. Yeah. I have always compared having a gun to having a pool. Yeah. Right. It's it's essentially the same thing to me yeah. um, because uh, there is a serious risk of death with a pool. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially for children. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and the the way that you solve this problem is by educating the people about how to use the pool safely. Yeah. 
And the same is true of guns. The it exact is. same thing is true of guns. Absolutely. Um, you know, my dad was a firearms instructor uh, for the FBI. Yeah. And he took us out shooting a lot, too. Yeah. And if you have ever been on a range with anybody who has any idea what they're doing, the first thing that happened every time... Now, I... I lived with this man for 44 years. Well, yeah. not lived with him, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was your father. <laughs> yeah, he was my father for 44 years until he died last year. Yeah. And uh, we went out to the range. I can't even count the number of times that we went out to the range. Yeah. And and it started when I was like seven or something. I Like yeah. I was pretty young when we first went out to the range. Yeah. And um, every single time that we went out to the range, every single time, the first thing that happened when we got there hmm. is he went over the rules. Yeah. yeah. And the rules are very simple. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's always have the gun pointed down range. Yeah. Don't load until you're ready to shoot. Yeah. Uh, well, down range or at the ground, like, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, Same. And never point the gun at anything that you don't plan to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Not a whole lot to it. <laughs> Finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot. Yeah. That was the other one. Yeah. yeah. Trigger discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we went over that every single time I went down there Yeah. every single time yeah. till I was in my forties. Well, I will say this. He went over that every time I went with him, mm -hmm. but I think that was for different. <laughs> I always thought that was kind of for me. <laughs> yeah. I think you had a gun taken away at least once, didn't you? I did have a gun taken away once. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently you're not supposed to shoot gangster style. <laughs> yeah. I learned that on the range with your dad. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, but this is this is, and if he had just followed those rules, and I I just can't imagine because he did this war movie if for no other reason. Yeah, um, I just can't imagine that all of his time in Hollywood, that he never got a gun safety course, and if he had just followed those very simple rules, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah. Check the gun. Check the gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like any time, and anybody that handles like. You hand me a gun, the first thing I'm going to do is check it. Yeah. Like, uh, it doesn't matter. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's what you do. Like, yep. check the gun. So, yeah. I don't know. I agree. I think he's responsible. I don't think that he will be held accountable for it, though. No. And, and I don't care about his anti-gun stuff, except no. insofar as it... Probably it, caused this. Yeah. Uh, or it, had a hand, at least. Yeah, in the, in the sense that he doesn't like guns to the point that he doesn't know enough about them to be safe with them. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's fine if you're some by the way if there's somebody listening i'm sure there may be that is an anti-gun person mm -hmm. that's fine don't handle guns <laughs> like, yeah i mean if that's your stance let that be your stance and don't handle guns mm -hmm. like doesn't make a difference if you're in some hollywood movie or whatever like if you're mm -hmm. that anti-gun you probably shouldn't be handling them yeah unless you've educated yourself <laughs> yeah and uh what i would suggest is the, uh, that you get educated yeah, absolutely. go go down. Take a just take a simple gun safety course. You don't even have to have your own gun to do a gun safety course. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, anywhere that has a range probably offers gun safety courses. Yeah. Um, it it it's, it's valuable. just good to know. Yeah, because you never know when you're going to be in the situation where you might where... need to swim. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, good. That was good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for my opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Um, and, and speaking of, you know, times changing and so forth and back to the school resource officer, we had school resource officers when I was, when I was in high school. No. Um, and when I was in high school, we didn't have school shootings either. And no. one thing that I can tell you though, is that when I was in high school, schools were not gun free zones. <laughs> they were absolutely not gun free zones. No. If you walked around in the parking lot at my high school, yeah. there were guns in half of the pickup trucks back windows. Yeah. Uh, rifles and shotguns because down here people went hunting before they came to school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and, um, I, I can't remember this specifically and I, that may or may not have been true. I think you were in school we as were this was right kind of changing. We were right on the cusp yeah. of all of that. Yeah. Cause I, I swear I remember kids or I say kids, but students that yeah. were students with us, um, having gun racks in trucks and having mm -hmm. guns on those racks. Yeah. They may have just had the racks, but I'm not, I can't remember. I've yeah. been meaning to get some clear, ask some of the other guys if they remember. Yeah. Um, well, there were definitely guns in the racks when I was in high school here. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember this, but uh, I was talking to somebody that's not a, not a lot older than me. Yeah. Um, old enough, older enough than me that this high school wasn't here, but, yeah. um, but the, I was, I would have been in the third, fourth graduating class that went 
through that entire high school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so. I didn't end up graduating from that high school, but yeah. Point being that the school hadn't been around very long when I, when I attended there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was talking with somebody that that's not a lot older than me, um, that talked about how kids had guns in the school. In the school. Yeah. Yeah. The, like people would come back from, uh, like Christmas or whatever and show off their new guns sure. and stuff and they'd have them in the lockers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? Uh, yeah, like that's. And so you want solutions, actually. Like you want a solution that doesn't require the state. Now, there's there is no solution that doesn't require the state of the public school. But yeah. um, here's my answer to the the problem of school shootings: yeah. is that you just don't make any uh, mandates about guns at all. Yeah. Um, it's right. a whole lot harder to be confident to that you can go in and shoot up a school if you don't know who all is going to have a gun. Yeah. Um, and the main yeah. thing, and if you want to say students can't have guns, okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, should, those, those but teachers that want to carry. Sh- yeah. Well, yeah. Should be able to. Should be absolutely be able to, because then you're in a situation where you don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, any teacher could be, could be carrying. Yeah. You know, any faculty member. And that way, and when your school resource officer goes and hides in the parking lot, maybe you still have somebody that can stop this that, thing. Yeah. That's willing to stand up and stop it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and by the way, just one more thing with that. Like, to me, it's just a serious violation of your Second Amendment for somebody who's licensed to carry a gun, mm-hmm. and which a vi- license is a violation, by the way, too. But that's a whole, yeah. nother, so, a whole nother conversation. Well, it's so easy <laughs> to get a license here. You just go in with well, your yeah, money. Yeah, you <laughs> just take them <laughs> you your just, money. Yeah. You pay them what, $20 a year, a year or something, something like, like that. that? Yeah. So, but anyway. get a picture taken. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, though, um, to, to, for somebody that's licensed to carry a gun to not be able to take that gun anywhere. Like mm-hmm. to me, that's just a violation of the second amendment. Like yeah. you should be able to take your gun anywhere, especially in, and it's, it's kind of crazy, especially a public place mm-hmm. or like, like, um, the courthouse is a good example. Like that's a public, that's publicly owned property, yeah. a public place, and I can't take my gun in there, mm-hmm. and that's just crazy to me. Yeah, well, um, there, the Second Amendment applies to the federal government. Yeah, only. Okay. Um, and there is a certainly, I I, I agree with your argument per, personally, yeah. but um, there is a historical precedent for. Uh, localities to set their own rules about guns yeah. um, in the same way that there are dry counties. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that I should have a legal right to drink alcohol, but apparently I can't buy it there <laughs> right. and, or consume it there. Yeah. Um, can you consume? I guess you can consume, but you can't buy there. I guess. I mean, as a, I wonder uh, if they serve it in church. <laughs> no, they in probably do the do the Welcher's Kool Aid. Yeah, I wonder if you have to like go out of the county to buy wine for your church. For your church, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a I don't, now I want to find that out. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I you know historically there is a precedent for um, restrictions you know, townships and so forth to prevent guns being carried. Yeah, um, in town and so forth. So yeah. Oh well. You know, and it's back to to each their own, right? Yeah. Like if yeah. you if you're not comfortable with that place, don't live there. Yeah, exactly. Well, and um, I hadn't seen the details, but there's a court case coming up to the Supreme Court about New York's restrictive gun laws. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. It will. So I wouldn't be confident in things falling on our side, but yeah, they never seem to. But who knows? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up. Um, unless you got more? No, no, I'm good, man. Okay, we're, we're pushing an hour here, so um, it's time to wrap up, I think. All right, All right well, uh, sorry we missed a week. Um, we, You know, we, we do really try. <laughs> no, uh, well, and that's the reason I led you on about the weekend, because I was yeah. like, I was like, I'm going to find some time to, to squeeze this in, and it just, yeah. Halloween weekend, man, just wasn't happening. <laughs> yeah. Now nah, it's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that our uh, our listeners were waiting with bated breath, and yeah. I hope we didn't lose too many because we missed a week again. Um, but we try and do less of that in the future. Absolutely. And so the plan, as always, <laughs> yeah, is to be back next week. Yeah. Um. Wait. What is next? Friday. 
So it's 12th. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will be out of town the Friday after that. So next week I'll be here, but the Friday after that I won't. So we, we can need still to do, record we, Thursday we maybe? We can do though? Thursday. I mean, we can get back to Thursday. Softball's over. Okay. Because so, I like Thursdays better myself. Though. Yeah. I, I Generally speaking, I do too. Um, all right. And then it, it gives us another day too if we can't. Yeah, know, because Thursday. like I say, because if, yeah, if we had done the Thursday before, if, if something had happened that Thursday, we could have went Friday. Yeah. So. Weekends are more difficult. Yeah. So. All right. Um, well, so the plan is to be back in a week. Uh, in the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Um, you can always check out the website. I actually, I really do need to make it a point to, like, because I do feel like I've missed. housekeeping on the website. Well, that too, but um, <laughs> I'm not very good at that stuff. Uh if anybody wants to volunteer their time to help me <laughs> clean up our website and make it just a better, um, please contact me, Michael at the Liberty Mike. Yeah. I would be happy to have your help. Um, but no, I was going to say there were there's so many things that I missed in the week, like things that I was thinking about um, where I was like, oh, you know, I, where I, I think I had something good to say, but I've lost it by now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that I really need to try and make more of an effort to use the website as it was intended as a blog. Yeah. And not necessarily write something long, you know, I'm bad about that too, though. Like I tend to <laughs> Once be you thorough, get started, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but just try and get something up when there's something that's happened that I have a take on that I, that I want to share yeah. before I forget it. Yeah. Um, We'll see if that happens or not. That'd be cool. So, but keep an eye on the website. There might be more content coming out on the website, uh, which is thelibertymike.com. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, so we plan to be here next Thursday then, I guess. I think, let's look at Thursday. All right. Yep. Um, next Thursday when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. Later.